I'm not a voice actor. I do my own audio books for my non-fiction work, which you know doesn't require me to alter my voice. I just narrate. Um, and it's simple. When you read stories, novels, you have to play the characters. It makes it far more in-depth. It's, it's more articulate. It's, it's harder. It's far harder. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I don't like to criticize other creatives. It's the last thing I like doing. But there's like an exception to this rule because of I'm, I get a bit fed up when you get massive franchises. And in my opinion, the authors do, or the publishers, whoever it is, they're not deciding on the optimal narrators for the role. So, like, for instance, I've read the first book in A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm on to the second one. I've took a little bit of a break, but I need to get back to finishing the series. And, of course, we all have our own ideas in our head of the character. And I can't help but think the voice that's attributed to the audio book for A Court of Thorns and Roses, it doesn't correspond in my mind at all with the character that was portrayed. It just doesn't have the raw emotion to it. And as much as I try and try and try, I can't get on board with it. Now, I love the first book, and I have no doubt I'm going to enjoy the whole series, reading it for myself. And I'm not someone, when it comes to creative work, I don't like refunding. I don't return things. I'd rather keep a library. I'd like to keep it permanently in my library. With this one, I've, I, I got the credit because I, I, I ordered the book, the audio book, because you know, I, I like the series that much. But I tried listening again. I, like, I can't get on board with it. I'm going to share a sample. Now, I'm, I'm going to read a little passage myself here, but I'm not even a professional at this. You know, it's just I'm not expecting to do great. And, and maybe I won't even do as good as them. But, you know, of course, it's a female role as well, so it makes it even harder. I just want to show the point, though, is that, you know, I think sometimes we have to get, you have to try and get it right. It's like you get one go. That's the real problem with audiobooks, for instance. You get one go at it. You know, I think it's a bit of a shame that you can't buy an audiobook and have multiple versions uh, and you get to pick the narrator you want to listen to throughout the book because once someone's attributed to it, it doesn't seem like you can ever get another edition of it. Um, I have seen a theatrical one, though, where there's like a, a drum, I think they call it a dramatized. So there's multiple people playing the parts which i think is quite a good interesting concept but again this person still plays the same role and it's like it doesn't sit with me you know yeah, so i'll play a little bit and like i say if you haven't read the books you're not really going to understand the character too much but it's not how it's put in my opinion it's not how it's portrayed a court of thorns and roses by sarah j mass narrated by jennifer ikeda Chapter One The forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. I'd been monitoring the parameters of the thicket for an hour, and my vantage point in the crook of a tree branch had turned useless. The gusting wind blew thick flurries to sweep away my tracks, but buried along with them any signs of potential quarry. Hunger had brought me farther from home than I usually risked, but winter was the hard time. The animals had pulled in, going deeper into the woods than I could follow, leaving me to pick off stragglers one by one, praying they'd last until spring. They hadn't. I wiped my numb fingers over my eyes, brushing away the flakes clinging to my lashes, it just it doesn't ring true. I'm sorry. Like I, to be honest, listening there, I was getting on a little bit. But to be honest, with the actual book, I fast forwarded it because I just wanted to see what the other characters sound like, and I, I I couldn't. I had to refund it in the end, and it just means this whole series, sadly, on audiobook, I won't be able to listen to. And I think that's it's quite sad, isn't it? You get you know I I don't like to criticize, and it seems like other people have enjoyed it, but for me, I just couldn't. It's not. Who I saw doing the role. Now, I'm not seeing me doing the role because I'm a mouth for starters. Um, but I'm going to try and do a little bit anyway. We'll see how I get on. I'm not expecting a masterpiece. Um, you could argue me criticising means I should be doing a masterpiece. But it's... it's going to come down to the vocals, though, isn't it? Who do you picture being that character, really, and who portrays it? And it's like, I think that's, I think we have to get it right when you're doing that because it's a huge thing. You know, maybe that book weren't that popular at the time when they released it. I don't know, but I don't know, man. So this is A Court of Mist and Fury. This is the sequel, the second book, we're in chapter six. I just randomly opened the page. We'll start there anyway. Um, doesn't give too much away. Rysand had mocked me about it once, asked me while we were under the mounting if forcing me to learn how to read would be my personal idea of torture. No, thank you, I said, gripping my fork to keep from chucking it at his head. 
You're going to be a high lord's wife, we said. You'll be expected to maintain your own correspondences, perhaps even give a speech or two. And the cauldron knows what else he Anf will deem appropriate for you. Make menus for dinner parties. Write thank you letters for all those wedding gifts. Embroider sweet phrases on pillows. It's a necessary skill. And you know what? Why don't we throw in shielding while we're at it? Reading and shielding. Fortunately, you can practice them together. They are both necessary skills? I said through my teeth. But you are not going to teach me. What else are you going to do with yourself? Paint? How's that going these days, Faye? What the hell does it even matter to you? It serves various purposes of mine, of course. What purposes? You'd have to agree to work with me to find out, I'm afraid. Something sharp poked him to my hand. I'd folded the fork into a tangle of metal. When I set it down on the table, Reese chuckled. Interesting. You said that last night. Am I not allowed to say it twice? That's not what I was implying and you know it. His gaze raked over me again. As if he could see beneath the peach fabric. Through the skin to the shredded soul beneath. Then it drifted to the mangled fork. Has anyone ever told you that you're rather strong for a high fay? Am I? I'll take that as a no. He popped a piece of melon into his mouth. Have you tested yourself against anyone? Why would I? I was enough of a wreck as it was. Because you were resurrected and reborn by the combined powers of the seven high lords, if I were you, I'd be curious to see if anything else transferred to me during that process. My blood chilled. Nothing else transferred to me. It'd just be rather interesting, he smirked at the word. If it did. It didn't. I'm not going to learn to read or shield with you. Why, from spite? I thought you and I got passed under the mountain. Don't get me started on what you did to me under the mountain. Reese went still as still as I'd ever seen him, as still as the death now beckoning in those eyes. Then his chest began to move faster and faster. Across the pillars towering behind him, I could have sworn the shadow of great wings spread. He opened his mouth, leaning forward and then stopped. Instantly, the shadows, the ragged breathing, the intensity were gone, the lazy grin returning. We have company. We'll discuss this later. No, we won't. But quick, light footsteps sounded down the hall. And then she appeared. If Rysand was the most beautiful male I'd ever seen, she was his female equivalent. Her bright golden hair was tied back in a casual braid. The turquoise of her coloured clothes, fashioned like my own, offset her sun-kissed skin, making her practically glow in the morning light. Hello, hello, she chirped, her full lips parting in a dazzling smile as her rich brown eyes fixed on me. Faye, Rice said smoothly, meet my cousin Morrigan. More, meet the lovely, charming and open-minded Faye. I debated splashing my tea in his face, but more strode towards me. Each step was assured and steady, graceful and grounded, merry but alert. Someone who didn't need weapons, or at least bothered to sheath them at her side. I've heard so much about you, she said, and I got to my feet awkwardly, jutting out my hand. She ignored it and grabbed me into a bone-crushing hug. She smelled like citrus and cinnamon. I tried to relax my taut muscles as she pulled away, and grinned rather fiendishly. You look like you were getting under Reese's skin she said, strutting to her seat between us. Good thing I came along, though I'd enjoy seeing Reese's balls nailed to the wall. We slid incredulous eyes at her, his brows lifting. 
I hid the smile that tugged on my lips. It's nice to meet you. Liar, Moore said, pouring herself some tea and loading her plate. You want nothing to do with us, do you? And Wicked Reese is making you sit here. You're perky today, Moore, Reese said. Moore's stunning eyes lifted to her cousin's face. Forgive me for being excited about having company for once. You could be attending your own duties, he said testily. I clamped my lips tighter together. Never seen Reese irked. I needed a break. You told me to come here whenever I liked, so what better time than now? When you brought my new friend to finally meet me. I blinked, realising two things at once. One, she actually meant what she said. Two, hers was the female voice I'd heard speak last night, mocking Reese for our quabble. So that went well, she teased, as if they were other alternative, any chance of pleasantness, where he and I were concerned. A new fork had appeared beside my plate. I picked it up, only to spear a piece of melon. You two look nothing alike, I said at last. Moore is my cousin in the loosest definition, he said. She grinned at him, devouring slices of tomato and pal cheese. But we were raised together. She's my only surviving family. I didn't have the nerve to ask what happened to everyone else or remind myself whose father was responsible for the lack of family at my own court. And as my only remaining relative, Reese went on, more believes she's entitled to breeze in and out of my life as she sees fit. So grumpy this morning, Moore said, plopping two muffins onto her plate. Didn't see you under the mountain, I found myself saying, hating those last three words more than anything. Oh, I wasn't there, she said. I was in... Enough, more he said, his voice laced with quiet thunder. It was a trial in itself not to sit up at the interruption, not to study them too closely. Ryson set his napkin on the table and rose. More will be here for the rest of the week, but by all means do not feel that you have to oblige her with your presence. More stuck out her tongue at him. He rolled his eyes, the most human gesture I'd ever seen him make. He examined my plate. Did you eat enough? I nodded. Good, then let's go. He inclined his head towards the pillars and swaying curtains behind him. Your first lesson awaits. Moore sliced one of the muffins in two in a steady sweep of her knife. The angle of her fingers, her wrist, indeed confirmed my suspicions that weapons weren't all foreign to her. If he pisses you off, Faye, feel free to shove him over the rail of the nearest balcony. Reese gave her a smooth, filthy gesture as he strode toward the hall. I eased to my feet when he was at a good distance ahead. Enjoy your breakfast. Whenever you want company, she said as edged around the table, give a shout. She probably meant that literally. I merely nodded and troweled after the High Lord. I agreed to sit at the long wooden table in a curtained-off alcove, only because he had a point. Not being able to read had almost cost me my life under the mountain. I'd be damned if I let it become a weakness again. His personal agenda or no. And as for the shielding, I'd be a damn fool not to take up the offer to learn from him. The thought of anyone, especially Reese, sifting through the mess in my mind, taking information about the spring court, about the people I loved, I'd never allow it, not willingly. But it didn't make it any easier to enjoy Reese's presence at the wooden table or the stack of books piled atop it. I know my alphabet, I said sharply as he laid a piece of paper in front of me. I'm not that stupid. I twisted my fingers in my lap, then pinned my restless hands under my thighs. I didn't say you were stupid, he said. I'm just trying to determine where we should begin. I leaned back in the cushioned seat. Since you've refused to tell me a thing about how much you know, my face warmed. Can't you hire a tutor? He lifted a brow. Is it that hard for you to even try? 
in front of me. You're a high lord. Don't you have better things to do? Of course, but none as enjoyable as seeing you squirm. You're a real bastard, you know that. Reese huffs a laugh. I've been called worse. In fact, I think you've called me worse. He tapped the paper in front of him. Read that. A blur of letters. My throat tightened. I can't. Try. The sentence had been written in elegant, concise print. His writing, no doubt. I tried to open my mouth, but my spine locked up. What exactly is your stake in all this? You said you'd tell me if I worked with you. I didn't specify when I'd tell you. I peeled back from him as my lip curled. He shrugged. Maybe I resent the idea of you letting those sycophants and warmongering fools in the spring court make you feel inadequate. Maybe I indeed enjoy seeing you squirm. Or maybe... I get it. He snorted. Try to read it, Faye. Prick. I snatched a paper to me, nearly ripping it in half in the process. I looked at the first words, sounding it out in my head. You... You... The next I figured out of a combination of my silent pronunciation and logic. Look. Good, he murmured. I didn't ask for your approval. Reese chuckled. Ab- Absolutely. It took me longer than I wanted to admit to figure that out. The next word was even worse. Damn. Del. I deigned to glance at him, brows raised. Delicious, he purred. My brows now knotted. I read the next two words, then whipped my face toward him. You look absolutely delicious today, Faye. That's what you wrote? He leaned back in his seat. As our eyes met, sharp claws caressed my mind, and his voice whispered inside my head. It's true, isn't it? I jolted back, my chair groaning. Stop that! But those claws now dug in. My entire body, my heart, my lungs, my blood yielded to his grip, utterly at his command as he said, The fashion of the night court suits you. I couldn't move in my seat, couldn't even blink. This is what happens when you leave your mental shields down. Someone with my sort of powers could slip inside. See what they want and take your mind for themselves. Or they could shatter it. I'm currently standing on the threshold of your mind. But if I were to go deeper, all it would take would be half a thought from me and who you are, your very self, would be wiped away. Distantly, sweat slid down my temple. You should be afraid. You should be afraid of this. And you should be thanking the gods, damn cauldron, that in the past three months no one with my sort of gifts has run into you. Now shove me out. I couldn't. Those claws were everywhere, digging into every fall, every piece of self. He pushed a little harder. Shove. Me. Out. I didn't know where to begin. I blindly pushed and slammed myself into him, into those claws that were everywhere as if I were a top loosed in a circle of mirrors. His laughter, low and soft, filled my mind and ears. That way, Faye. In answer, a little open path gleamed inside my mind, the road out. It would take me forever to unhook each claw and shove the mass of his presence out the narrow opening. If I could wash it away, a wave, a wave of self, of me, to sweep out all of him, I didn't let him see the plan take form as I rallied myself into a cresting wave and struck. The claws loosened reluctantly, as if letting me win this round. He merely said, Good. My bones, my brow and blood, they were mine again. I slumped in my sea. Not yet, he said. Shield, block me out so I can't get back in. I already wanted to go somewhere quiet and sleep for a while. Claws at the outer layer of my mind, stroking. I imagined a wall of adamant snapping down, black as night and a foot thick, the claws retracting, a breath before the wall sliced them in two. 
Reese was grinning. Very nice. Blunt, but nice. I couldn't help myself. I grabbed a piece of paper and shredded it in two, then four. You're a pig. Oh, most definitely, but look at you. You read the whole sentence, kicked me out of your mind and shielded. Excellent work. Don't condescend me. I'm not. You're reading at a level far higher than I anticipated. That burning returned to my cheeks, but mostly illiterate. At this point, it's about practice, spelling, more practice. You could be reading novels by Nisner. If you keep adding to those shields, you might very well keep me out entirely by then too. Nisner, it had been the first Tamlin in his court would celebrate in nearly 50 years. Amaranth had banned it on a whim, along with a few other small but beloved fey holidays that she had deemed unnecessary. But Nisner was months from now. Is it even possible to truly keep you out? Not likely, but who knows how deep that power goes. Keep practicing. We'll see what happens. And will I still be bound by this bargain at Nice and the two? Silence. I pushed. After, after what happened, I couldn't mention specifics on what had occurred under the mountain, what he'd done for me during the fight with Amarantha, what he'd done after. I think we can agree that I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. His gaze was unflinching. I blazed on. Isn't it enough that we're all free? I splayed my tattooed hand on the table. By the end, I thought you were different. Thought that it was all a mask. But taking me away, keeping me here? I shook my head, unable to find the words vicious enough, clever enough to convince him to end this bargain. His eyes darkened. I'm not your enemy, Fay. Tamlin says you are. I curled the fingers of my tattooed hand into a fist. Everyone else says you are. And what do you think? He leaned back in his chair again, but his face was grave. You're doing a damn good job of making me agree with them. Liar, he purred. Did you ever tell your friends about what I did to you under the mountain? So that comment at breakfast had gotten under his skin. I don't want to talk about anything related to that. With you or them? No, because it's so much easier to pretend it never happened. Unfortunately, I did record another seven minutes, but the microphone completely cut out. I looked and noticed the microphone was no longer doing anything. So it's a bit of a frustration. Um, so, you know, voice acting is my crux. It's very hard for me to jump between characters for instance in my head it sounds fine when i listen back often i'm like ah oh, there's not enough variance between the characters it's and it's something for me to work on in the future but i don't see myself as a voice actor anyway so i don't see myself doing this professionally for other people um but the point is there's so many people out there that could be um tested for the roles you know and i think it's really important to take it seriously as to how you want the characters portrayed so it's nothing to say that this person can't do what they do it just for me their voice didn't suit the story at all and, and like i said when i skipped it through it just didn't it didn't it wasn't something i could actually part with because it ruined the image i had in my mind you know and i said you know what i'd rather have my own internal monologue um playing out the story than that person but yeah there's some audio books where i can i don't like criticizing people like i say but i think when you hold something so sacred it's like come on we, we, we've got to uh We'll do better with our choice selection. It's not only this this one. I've seen it with other audio books as well, where the books got a certain um, characteristics, and they're just not picking. The, 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 they're picking someone who can do audio books like narration, but they're not. It doesn't seem like the selection process is enough is thorough enough to make it fit the story. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, I enjoy reading it, but I know my limitations. You know, I don't. I wouldn't expect to get hired for something like that because I literally don't have the skill set to do it justice. And even I can recognise that, but I can enjoy doing it. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's levels, you know. 